Hello everybody and welcome to the Japanese Grand Prix here at Suzuka. Hang on mate, wait a second. Yeah, good, go. Lights out then, 12 laps, soft tyres uh, at Suzuka here. A meaningless, pointless pit stop um, has to be done within the race. Oh, I'll go into that in more detail later. First of all, let me just draw your attention to this little sausage who is the main focal point for this video all will become clear later on so on to the race then lap one and we are in p1 would you believe it as we head in towards degna one here at suzuka an interesting race this one quite enjoyable i must admit it took me a little while to get the hang of this one i've never used my dd pro wheel with a uh, super formula car on gt7 and it's horrendous uh, for want of a better word very difficult very twitchy these cars I think are more suited to a controller player I could be wrong that's just my opinion and uh, obviously it has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that I might just not be very good so through spoon then up to Wards 130R along the back straight and we are about to witness the first strike against Anzori through 130R down towards the chicane I'm noticing he's right behind us there so I'm going to take a tight line but it's not going to make any difference because he's going to shunt one right up the inside let's have a little look at the replay of that one giving him plenty of space turn in and nope and he makes absolutely no attempt to give that position so based on that we're going to make a pointless pit stop um, apparently in reverse as uh, the pit crew there rushing to bring out a set of new tyres to put onto the vehicle which as we pull in somebody's going to completely change their mind notice we don't need to put new tyres on at all but the tyres they brought out are going to completely vanish into thin air uh, as we start lap number two and begin our journey to collecting some places back and moving back up the grid again. One player there uh, decided to park on the apex of the corner, possibly to admire the scenery. We're going to drive straight through him because uh, that's how cars work. A brief little glimmer of hope there as this car gets himself a nice little penalty by exiting left and leaving the chat. He's going to serve his penalty here and through another car we go into 130R for the second time as it is the second lap. Fast forward then on to lap three. Uh, still catching the cars in front as uh, we are faster. Um, I'm quite amazed with myself sometimes how I manage to work these things out on the fly. Um, into the, uh, the first Degna, Degna one and Degna two. Trying to close the gap to the cars in front somebody's going to have a little accident there and he's rather nicely and unusually going to move over to the right and let us through as to not cause an accident which is something you very rarely see in Gran Turismo possibly something that has come with the new update who knows and uh, uh, but all, all sorts of things have come with this update as in my previous video we discovered that cars can actually now turn into lawnmowers a, uh, a link of said video will be at the end of, of this one should you care to click on it and take a look so along the back straight towards 130R for the third time being lap 3 uh, through the chicane on to lap four then trying to close the gap in front uh, taking a new um, sort of strategy towards achieving that by not driving in the slipstream there to the car in front of us whatsoever through turn one still trying to close the gap not going to do anything too drastic because I'm pretty sure at this point I'm the only person that's pitted so my strategy is to just drive nicely normally not too fast that car's on fire somehow um, and overtake people as they pit as the British driver there exits left we take his position from him as we begin to write the thank you letter he decides he wants it back and launches one up the inside but gets a terrible exit and the position is returned once again through spoon then and uh, this time judging by the fact that my previous 
our strategy of not using slipstream did not work, we're going to try the opposite here and use slipstream, which has worked somewhat, but not hugely. As we uh, go into lap five, we still haven't overtaken the guys. So this leads me to think that I possibly might need to drive faster. Um, please let me know in the comments if there is another strategy available that may possibly work better. Going to hang back a little bit though. These two are going to have an accident and there he goes. Uh, exits left, no grip. I'm gonna go up the inside of this guy and then rather brilliantly hang it outside and shoot up the inside. What a move. Uh, Verstappen would be proud of that one, I'm sure. This race is turning into a very uh, interesting, riveting spectacle, unlike every other F1 race, um, mainly because Verstappen is indeed in the race. So exiting Spoon again then, uh, towards 130R for, yes, you have guessed it, the fifth time would you believe it on the fifth lap uh, incredible how that works out um, it's a good job I'm sat down recording this because um, I don't think I could stand based on the level of my genius so through chicane then on to start lap six one guy there has pitted so we're going to take his position from him and move up to seventh position Halfway through lap six then, through the Degna curves, trying to close the gap to the guy in front, which has been proven to be a very effective way of overtaking somebody. I, I don't own the rights to that strategy, so if anybody else would like to use that strategy, um, feel free to use it. I don't need any thanks for it. Um, I'm, I'm literally going to give that to you purely out of generosity and the kindness of my heart. If anybody would like to say thank you for such valuable information, feel free to drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and if you're feeling like you would like to uh, support the channel in any way, there is a donations button on the channel homepage below the banner with a link to PayPal. Uh, should you wish to, any donations would be hugely appreciated. So the front of the grid then have all pitted and we can see there as we zoom in the sausage is just leaving the pit lane so now the fun really begins we go down in towards the end of lap seven then noticing he's behind us i'm going to give him the space based on what he did before i don't want to risk him punting me off and i'd quite like to end the race cleanly and not give him the satisfaction of achieving what he set out to. Why this guy cannot just drive sensibly and cleanly, I don't know, because he's actually quick. He's not a slow driver, he's a very quick driver, and more than capable of winning a race purely on merit. I don't really understand why he has to do it in a way that ruins everybody else's race, but we're gonna try and stay with him here. The guy in first place hasn't actually pitted yet, so at the moment we're on for P2. Although very shortly that is, uh, that's going to be changed for a P3. And you can see there Ronson, who is going to play a very important part in this video, um, which will be explained in more detail towards the end, so stay tuned for that one. Uh, Ronson is directly behind us, he was also very quick, so I'm aware of that, so not only am I trying to catch the guy in front now, I'm also having to drive somewhat defensively to keep Ronson at bay, but that is going to be more difficult uh, than anticipated, because as I said, Ronson is not a slow driver, a very capable, very quick driver. And uh, while we're on the subject of Ronson, um, uh, I have a feeling he may be watching this video. So Ronson, thank you, mate. I appreciate the support on the channel. And it was an absolute pleasure to be racing with you here at Suzuka. So on to the straight then. We're going to collect the slipstream from uh, Mr. Sausage and slip up the inside into turn one and get the job done and go after the guy in first place but as we go into the curves here sausage behind us 
uh, is going to start his devious little plan on how to get the position back. So we've set the uh, fastest sector time of the circuit there. So our pace is good. Going into the uh, Degna curves, trying to close the gap again using that tactic to overtake somebody, uh, which has proved to work so well. So as we go towards the hairpin there, Sausage is going to launch one completely up the inside, push me wide and uh, also allow Ronson in third place to get through. Uh, a very fair move by Ronson. Didn't do anything wrong there. I'd have done exactly the same thing if I was in his position. So fourth place then, knowing that the guy in first place hasn't pitted, we're still on for a podium finish. So the race is on. Uh, not gonna do anything too silly. I've done this race, I would have thought, probably 11 million times now before making this video and I think I managed to finish on the podium or even finish the race in about six of them. So through the chicane, Bronson and Sausage are having somewhat of an argument but again we're going to pick up the slipstream of Anzori in front of us and we're going to send one up the inside again into turn one. Now this is really going to upset him. He does not like this at all. He likes overtaking somebody. Uh, he's more of a giver than a receiver, I think. So as we go into the second part of the curve there, he's going to just shove us straight off and carry along on his merry way towards the two drivers in front of him. Unfortunately, for the next couple of laps that is pretty much our race over we've got dirty tires from uh, the sausage pump there which is going to play a huge part and uh, have absolutely nothing to do with us not being able to drive and going off at uh, Degna 2 there however on to the last lap we can see that Ronson and uh, sausage are having a, an argument here Sausage is going to try and punt Ronson and makes a complete mess of it and exits to the right rather spectacularly and Ronson is going to carry on to win the race. Dirty tyres for Sausage, he has no grip whatsoever. In fact I think at this point he's, uh, he's pretty much given up but he sees me, puts his foot down, gets a left tyre on the dirt and off he goes and we are going to come home in P to the guys back at the factory going absolutely mental as are the crowd which is completely understandable after witnessing such a spectacle and incredible drive from myself there so onto the replays then and this shows my point about Andori being a quick driver and backs up my theory on needlessly driving like a complete womble he doesn't need to do that he's obviously quite quick why he needs to drive like that I don't know maybe he gets some enjoyment out of it but yeah it, it's beyond me after such a brilliant move into turn one you were about to see him completely brake check once and behind him pointlessly guys as always thank you very much for watching the video I hope you've enjoyed it please feel free to subscribe if you haven't done already drop a like on the video and I will catch you in the next one